Hey, gentlemen, there's a world championship fight. You both know the rules have been thoroughly gone over. I want you to remember two things. I want you to obey my commands, but most importantly, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the bell. A contender used to be somebody in prize fighting. Can Alfonso Gomez make a modern contender somebody again? Round one begins, and Miguel Cotto steps out and throws three or four fast punches as if he wants to start fast. Cotto so confident in his jab now after what he accomplished in two fights last year. Good left hook to the cheek of Alfonso Gomez early. Now Gomez gets off a right hand partially blocked by Cotto, who's become very deft at blocking shots upstairs with his gloves. A little bit unusually confident, a little bit arrogant and cocky even in this fight, the way it's starting off. And he's throwing a lot of big bombs off the bat, which he normally doesn't do. Well, he says that mentally, Emmanuel, beating Shane Mosley has taken him to another level, has given him a deeper confidence based on his understanding that he can beat anybody. If he can beat somebody like Mosley, he can beat two superstars of the sport. Well, he showed a lot of different skills in fighting Mosley. He showed he actually was out boxing change with surprise with his jab. And even when he was in trouble about the ninth or tenth round, he moved around, worked himself out of trouble, and got back into the fight at the end. So it was probably very well hockey. See, so he had so many career defining da uh, uh, dangerous moments that he's had, having been knocked down and hurt so much. But that was the one. He's already put a lot of leather on Alfonso Gomez in the first round. And Gomez's face has reddened in the middle on the nose and above the nose from the accuracy of Cotto's early assault. Cotto is surprisingly quick with the straight right hand. And one of his advantages there is he throws that shot straight down the middle. There's no loop in Miguel Cotto's right hand. No, he's a good puncher. He does a variety of everything. Body punches, head punches, jab, right, everything. But his jab is seeming to be the most effective punch so far as the fight is moving on. The most noticeable thing is that Colo is quicker with his hands. He's beating Gomez to the punch more often than not. And that is often the difference in the levels of the game. The quickness of the fighters. Gomez has been very confident, leading, stressing that after what he went through on the contender, and having beaten Gaddy here and having beaten Bentaki, he doesn't feel as though there's any reason for him to worry against any opponent. And there's a good left hand by Gomez that momentarily stops Cotto in mid-combination. Even though Cotto has sort of arrived to punch, his only punch he's really been affected with is in his left jab. Most of the wide punches, is, you know, Gomez is picking them off and catching them on the side. But his left jab has been very consistent. Sometimes Cotto will switch to a southpaw stance, and he's been surprisingly effective with it, particularly against Zab Judah. And he wobbles Gomez with a left hook to the body. The trademark punch of Miguel Cotto. That almost looked like a jab to me. Come on, move. See, he's putting in the jab. He's putting in the jab. Move, move. To the right or move. Move your head. Because he's coming in with the jab. He's hitting with the jab. He's catching with the jab. Keep your hands up now. As soon as he puts it in, you throw yours. But come on, immediately. Come on. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep your defense up. Keep your defense up, especially when you come in. Yeah, work, work. Come on. He, he has no resistance at the body. CompuBox numbers in round one. It was all Miguel Cotto. 27 out of 63, including 13 out of 32 jabs. Gomez showed his medal, landing 12 out of 55 punches, but none with the kind of authority that Cotto was able to demonstrate. Good body shot with the right hand this time by Cotto. And you heard Alfonso Gomez Sr. saying to his son between rounds, you've got to stop his jab. You've got to counter with your own jab as soon as he throws it. Him up, him up. 
Gomez came out of the contender series with a reputation as a brawler, primarily because the edited highlights in those shows showed him brawling. But he really has skills. He's really a boxer puncher. He threw 37 jabs around against Gaddy, but he's just getting beaten to the punch here. And getting moved by the punches yeah, with which he's hit. I was going to say, Gomez fights with his legs so far apart that he has, has very bad balance, and so it's easy for him to get knocked off balance, so to say, because his legs are so far apart. When you look at the marks already on Gomez's face, it suggests to you the authority with which Cotto is landing out there. Yeah, Cotto's had a lot of punches. It's most effective that hard, stiff left jab, though, that he's landing. Good left hook to the body again by Miguel Cotto. Gomez, Gomez keeps his right hand to the side of his face, and as a result, Cotto is just having a picnic going right through the center. Well, why has he turned south for? I think he just Man. feels really comfortable in this fight. He just seems to be very relaxed and just having fun out there. I've never saw him so confident and, and, uh, and relaxed. I mean, Gomez is no slouch, and Cotto's treating this like a sparring session, Emmanuel. Yeah, because he, I don't think he feels that Gomez can punch and hurt him with any, enough punching power. Knocking out boxes. So Cotto is superior in every department in this fight. It's for speed, boxing, uh, power, body punching, head punching, experience, everything. Everything favors him. It's, it, what it's fun to envision what Cotto might do against Antonio Margarito and what Margarito might do against Cotto. That will be a candidate for fight of the year. That's going to be a rough fight because, you know, one thing we know, Cotto does get hurt. So, and, and if he, but the one thing, he gets up and he fights. Margarito very seldom even gets hurt. Well, this is a knockdown of Gomez. Gomez looked at the referee as if to say, he didn't hit me with a punch, I just fell. But the bottom line is, with as much leather as Cotto has landed so far, You'd be hard-pressed not to call it a knockdown. Yeah, it didn't look like a clean punch at all, that he was off balance. Uh, well, he's going to be off balance all night the way he fights. He's on his heels and his legs are too far apart. Our replay is going to show you that Cotto got credit for a knockdown without landing his punch. But I saw Mike Tyson get credit for a knockout against Carl The Truth Williams without ever landing a punch. Williams just fell down three times. That was a brilliant round for Cotto. Mm. Huge. Breathe deeply now. Come on, breathe it and hold it. Very nice. Come on, measure him and put him in. Use your jab. Use your jab. Use your jab and throw it strongly. But come on, move, move and throw. Don't tell me okay. Do it. Move it to side to side. Here you see, Cotto lands the right hand, and then he throws the left hand and misses. But just because of the feet getting entangled and probably the fact that Gomez has such bad balance, it was actually ruled as a knockdown. Left feet. Copy box numbers. Good news for Gomez. He landed 22 of 76 total punches. Bad news for Gomez. Cotto landed 32 of 79. And Cotto is landing the harder shots. Gomez had never been down in a professional fight. And, of course, that is a questionable knockdown. Yeah, still hasn't been down from contact, but he has absorbed a lot of punishments in the first two rounds against Miguel Cotto. Gomez trying for more head movement now, trying to provide a more elusive target. Momentarily stops the onslaught by doing so. Cotto switches southpaw. I find myself wondering what happens if he lands one of those right hands. I Cotto switches back to regulation. Well, the fact that Gomez is not considered a puncher is probably one of the reasons he's so comfortable doing that. Cut snaps Gomez's head up. Cotto's arrogance is continuing to flow. Good right hand inside by Gomez, countering. He saw himself as the counterpuncher in the fight.
If you get a look at Alfonso Gomez's features between rounds, though, you will see that slowly, inexorably, Miguel Cotto is rearranging his face. Right hand lands for Cotto. Left hook lands for Cotto inside. Back to the southpaw stance. Lands a straight left hand. Back to the regular stance. Gomez lands a right hand, but not with the kind of power with which he's been absorbing punches. Alfonso got in a left hook to the body, too, but look at that combination. Cotto being Cotto. Emmanuel, is Cotto too casual about this? Well, I think he's still, you know, he, he's okay because the fact that Gomez is not a big puncher. And he can hit Gomez anytime he wants and he punches to the inside. If you notice, Gomez keeps his right hand on the side of his face, but he's wide open for left uppercuts, jabs, or anything through the center. Well, he's fallen in love a little bit with the idea of doing more boxing since the Mosley fight. That be the end. That was a left hook. Oh, Body shots like that are very difficult to weather. Now that's a real knockdown. And that's the end of round three. And this has been a full-scale annihilation so far. How you feeling, all right? You want to fight? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Sure? You okay? All right, we're going to watch you closely, all right? You're taking a lot of shots, okay? Cotto show, you have to do is showing that when he boxes, that those big punches can be really telling. There you say Cotto lands a left uppercut right in the solar plexus. Normally his best body shot is a left hook to the ribs, but due to the fact that Gomez keeps his hands on the side so much, he changed up and brought it right up through the center. The most painful punch you can receive is a punch to the solar plexus. If you're a layman relatively new to watching boxing, you've gotten two clear indications tonight of how damaging body punches can be. The two most devastating blows of the evening have been body shots, despite a lot of heavy leather landed upstairs. Harold, how do you have it through three? A very obvious three to nothing, 30 to 25, Miguel Cotto. Give him an extra point for the knockdown of round two. Give him an extra point for the knockdown of round three. Jim, one thing very interesting, you can't be saved by the bell in any round. In that round, Alfonso Gomez went down. The bell rang, he had to get up. If he didn't get up, I mean, you know, the bell can't save you. Randy Newman would have captured him out after the bell. Three to nothing, Miguel Cotto. Cotto came out in this round as though he wanted to test just how hurt Gomez is and whether he can get him out of here. Once again, to emphasize a point that Larry made in round two, Alfonso Gomez had never been knocked down and has never been knocked out in his professional career. And this despite the fact that in the Contender Series three years ago, he was fighting fighters who were naturally 10, 12, 15 pounds bigger than him. He's, and he's won 14, or he has uh, has, a lo has lost just once in his last 15 fights. So he is a fighter who has shown great improvement and would be a decent fighter against a lot of good fighters. Well, this is reminiscent of what Cotto did to Carlos Quintana here in Atlantic City a year and a half ago. Quintana, who now has a title belt, a very skilled fighter, a guy who beat an outstanding young puncher from South America named Joel Julio, and Cotto annihilated him with body shots. You think Cintron could fight Gomez? Yeah, they, they, could, they could fight. But, 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 yeah, they would be a good fight, but really, right now, it's so much excitement in the top echelon of the Railway Division, especially right now, looking at the fight between Cotto and Margarita is going to be phenomenal in a lot of ways. Gomez is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe fighting, but he's like in some of a 22 rifle compared to somebody with a real big powerful shotgun. He just he doesn't have the power to stand in that trade with Joe Cotto. 
Uh, is Gomez and showing and too much to courage, Emmanuel, or, is, yes. or does he have no choice? I think his corner's going to have to stop this fight because he's not the type of guy. He's getting him. hurt badly. This is the kind of stuff that affects your career. Yeah, and he doesn't have enough power to. There's no uh, way and, he and, and he's just being beaten to the punch I'm consistently. Here, punch. Get up. Said it many times. Miguel Cota doesn't just beat you; he beats you up. Three fighters among his last eight opponents have not fought again. Come on, no round punches. Throw straight with everything you have. Move side to side and your hands up. Cover yourself. Come on, you tired? Very tired? How are we doing, Alfonso? All right? Listen, one more round, okay? He's really getting hit with a lot of shots. I'm concerned, all right? You better make something happen, okay? We're going to stop this fight, all right? Come on, son, the only thing you have to do, all you have to do is stand there. He's standing there. Just stay there. Throw everything you have. Uppercuts, hooks, everything. Uppercuts, hooks. Uppercuts, hooks. That's all. Come on, throw everything. You heard the ring doctor tell Gomez that if he didn't start to do more, he would have to stop the fight. I'm wondering if Larry Hazard the recently deposed commissioner of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. We're here tonight. If he might not have already stopped this fight. Our, our Alfonso Gomez took 60 punches from Miguel Cotto in round four. 60 punches from some fighters might not be enough to seriously damage him. 60 punches from Miguel Cotto in one round is something that should never happen in your life. I, was, I saw the doctor also tell the referee Randy Newman that, you know, Keep his eyes open, and if he decides to stop it, he would justify it. And in fact, Randy Newman, before the fight, Jeff Wall, who is the head of the contender who, who promotes Gomez, was concerned about him letting the fighter get hurt because the last fight when Gomez fought here, Larry Hazard actually jumped in the ring himself and stopped the fights to keep him from hurting when he was fighting with uh, Arturo Getty. And so uh, Jeff Wall was concerned about that, and it was considering having Randy Newman a request for him to be replaced. Well, it's very wise of Wald, who sometimes oversells his fighters. Well, he realized that something like this could happen in here. He said he was very concerned that Randy may possibly be a little slow in stopping the fight in case Gomez got hurt. Gomez trying to get inside now and do some damage. To the body he's fighting gamely yeah and it it was his father alfonso gomez senior who asked him between rounds just go out and throw everything and that would seem to be an unwise tack to take down goes gomez for the third time in the fight he's a shell of the person who came into the ring and you wonder how much more Evidence yeah. they need. Randy Newman looked at the ringside doctor there. Well, it wasn't a big shot that knocked him down. It when was you, a jab. When you have a fighter that's been out class like this, and he's a good puncher, you still say there's hope because he can maybe turn everything around with one single punch. But when Gomez, who's not a puncher, is taking this type of a beating, you have to really seriously consider thinking about it. Yeah, he's not, not really stopping. getting any respect from Cotto. No, he has no power. So it's going to be hard for him to turn the fight around with one single punch. Part of Gomez's rationale for how he would beat Cotto was, well, we've all seen that Miguel has a weak chin. Abs you know, actually, Ricardo Torres knocked him down, and Demarcus Corley wobbled him with a headshot. Cotto's camp points out those mishaps took place when Cotto was starching himself to make 140 pounds, when he was really battling weight to try to get down to 140. It hasn't happened in the 147-pound weight class.
When, when Art Aragon was once told by a... You're reading all his jabs. Come on, move to the side like this. Come on, you're not moving. You're not moving at all. You're not moving. You're not moving at all. That's why he's catching you with all the jabs. Come on, Doc. I think that's it. I think that's it. The doctor's going to stop the fight. We're done. There will be no round six. Miguel Cotto will have a technical knockout victory. I believe, at least, we heard the doctor say that. And now Randy Newman officially acknowledges that it's over. I just want to say that when Art Aragon was told by a referee that he may have to stop the fight if something didn't happen, he responded, what's holding you back? <laughs> This was a good doctor stoppage, right, Emmanuel? It was a very good stoppage. It, was, it, it could have been stopped around soon, even. Well, and, uh, we made the point that the knockdown in round five didn't come on a big punch. And that's often an indication that the yeah. fighter who goes down is done. It he, was a yeah. jab. It was just a surely a simple hard jab, and he couldn't even handle that because he just combination of being tired, outclassed, bad balance, and just thoroughly beaten. So he was allowed to finish the round from that point forward, but an intelligent stoppage between rounds by the doctor. Miguel Cotto has win number 32, knockout number 27, and a landslide victory over Alfonso Gomez. Let's go to ring announcer Lupe Contreras for the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, under the advice of the ringside physician, referee Randy Newman stops about before the start of round number six. Your winner, by way of technical knockout and still, the WBA welterweight champion of the world, De Caguas, Puerto Rico, Miguel Angel. Oh, oh.